What's up, YouTube? I'm Valentin the Mad, and this is the God of View of Soldier of Fortune Payback. Soldier of Fortune Payback, where do I even begin? Supposedly, it's a sequel of Soldier of Fortune 2, one of my favorite Gore games, but I personally can't call it SOF3. Why? First, it's done by a different company. A company that does not has a particularly great track record, but the main reason is the gore was not improved. And really, I'm not spoiling the video here. A short comparison of some gameplay footage will reveal that the response is not nearly as detailed as what we have in game 2. However, Payback still has some interesting mechanics, and I do think that they need to be discussed. So how gory is Soldier of Fortune Payback? Let's find out. I'll be reviewing every aspect of the game's gore effects, and the score will be set based on four categories. Body damage, environment, animations and sounds, the feel. Each limb has two points of amputation, and the head will vanish when destroyed. The looks are not bad, you'll see the bone and some muscle tissue, however, there is no blood splatter around the point of amputation. At all. You'll see a gory looking stump, but everything around it will be absolutely clean. However, the biggest issue with the dismemberment is that it's way too easy to activate. One or two assault rifle rounds are all it takes to make a head or a limb come off. This makes dismemberment feel very cheap. Have no doubt, an AK round will mess a person up, but it should not behead people and tear limbs off so easily. How about non-dismembering damage? What you see is blood splatter at the point of impact. You see the same type of decals for all the weapons, whether it's a small pistol, a shotgun, or a 50k rifle. But the biggest issue in my opinion is that it just doesn't look right. It doesn't look like a wound, nor does it look like a blood soaked area. It's a shame, those decals work properly for the most part. If the looks were good and you had some variety based on the type of weapon you're using, they could provide decent feedback. A few other things I wanna mention. The only body damage for melee attacks is dismemberment. No, your character is not wielding a sword. So what happens? On first impact, there will be no body damage whatsoever, but if you keep slashing, the limbs will be dismembered and the head will vanish. That's right, vanish. And of course, you have boss fights. You'll be fighting regular people that for some reason can take ludicrous amounts of damage. According to the game's logic, a regular grunt's head will come off in one or two rounds. How about a boss? More like one or two magazines. Repeatedly shooting the same character and seeing little to no response on their side is simply never a fun thing to do, whether you're fighting an oversized demon or a guy in a suit. The only thing I found kind of entertaining about those fights would be the ridiculously cheesy one-liners. Where is your freedom now, American? Your Western ideals will not save you. Judgment Day is coming for your infidel country, and I will be its judge. You have blood stains on impact and further spilling on dismemberment and neck shots. The entire environment aspect is centered around what I call functional blood puffs. You see the spray come out of the character and stain the surface it lands on. As you can see, the stain is proportional with the spilling effect. Way too many games have huge blood puffs and tiny stains or blood fountains that go into nowhere. Soldier of Fortune Payback is a great example of how to do those things right. However, there are a few issues with the spinning mechanics. First, the looks. Just like the wounds, the stains are somewhat too bright and too transparent. Also, blood stains should not be piling up. The other issue is that the functional blood buffs are all you have. There will be no blood dripping of wounded characters, and there are no blood pools. I think it would be best if the splashes and the spray effects would cause smaller stains, similar to this one, 
and after the character falls down, a blood puddle would form below him. Despite those issues, I think the blood spinning mechanics are very fun in this game. Would be great if those mechanics were taken further, but the spinning is pretty entertaining as it is. Now how is the mess in the long term? It disappears. You have a low limit of maximum blood stains, and bodies may or may not disappear almost instantly. The blood spinning mechanics are the best part of the gore system and it's a shame that you can't enjoy the aftermath of a fight such as this. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Those things should be configurable on PC. If your machine can handle it, you should by all means have an option for the blood and bodies to stay. You have response animations on impact, changes of behavior for wounded characters, death animations for shots in the throat and the dick, and characters can survive dismemberment. One of the first things you'll see in the game is characters surviving dismemberment. After losing a leg, a character will fall into a disabled state and may try to shoot you. After losing an arm, he'll either stand there, stare at you and drop, or run away and drop after a few seconds. This is the biggest issue with this feature. While technically, characters survive dismemberment, it only lasts for several seconds and the reaction is very basic. You won't see legless characters trying to crawl away, armless soldiers freaking out, or maybe healthy characters trying to get wounded ones to safety. Surviving dismemberment can potentially be an amazing feature, but it needs to be taken much further with many different possible behaviors. Another notable feature is the wounded behavior. After taking a bullet, a character gets hunched, and though his movement isn't much slower, you can clearly see that he's struggling. This is a feature I've been asking for in near them every go review, and I was really happy to see it. It's also a good example of visible wounded behavior that does not slow down the character that much, which could be great for certain multiplayer games. But as you can guess, there's no avoiding that dreaded however, and indeed, there is one huge issue. This wounded behavior rarely happens. For the most part, it will simply not be activated. You'll still see characters shrug off bullets and keep running like nothing happened. It just... blows my mind. The animations are there. They are good. Yet, they are not used. Other than those features, there's nothing notable in the animations department. The response animations are generic, and you have death animations only for shots in two areas. The bottom line is that there's a very small variety of possible animation responses, and they simply do not deliver good feedback. This is one of the biggest issues with the gore system of the game. Animations are where the weight of your hit is, and while you have some interesting mechanics that could potentially be great, the animations of Payback do not deliver even something I can call basic and solid. Enemies will react when hit, on death, and will comment during the fight. The reactions are very short for the most part. It looks especially odd when you see a character mid-animation not making a single sound, or someone who just lost an arm standing in complete silence for a few seconds. You may have already noticed it, but there is one more sound missing when you see that armless guy. The sound of blood being spilled. You see big blood fountain spurring, yet you won't hear anything. In fact, the only weapon related response sound this game has is a rather poor one for stabbing. There are no special sounds for tearing off limbs or anything like that. Technically, the feel should be decent. With the exception of melee, you'll see body damage on every hit. The spinning is cool, and you'll see animation responses for most of your attacks. However, the majority of those features are done badly, and the lack of variety I mentioned in the animations category is true for the other aspects as well. The result is that you have a fairly small selection of mostly bad responses. The spinning mechanics are somewhat of a redeemer here, and they are entertaining. However, the stains disappear very quickly, and you won't hear any sounds when the blood is being spilled. Also, one entertaining feature is not enough to deliver a responsive feel. So the score for body damage is 10 out of 30. 
The score for environment is 12 out of 30. The score for animations and sounds is 13 out of 30. I give the feel a score of 5 out of 10. So this gives the gore system of Soldier of Fortune Payback a score of 40 out of 100. Soldier of Fortune 1 delivered a very responsive experience in every single aspect. It's also the game that got me interested in response mechanics in the first place. After that, we had Soldier of Fortune 2, which greatly expanded on the mechanics of Game 1, delivering an experience that tops the vast majority of games even today, and then we have Payback. It offers fun blood fountains. On a serious note, the reactions are not nearly as detailed as what we have in Game 2, and though I haven't played it in over a decade, I'm pretty sure that even Game 1 tops Payback in certain aspects. I hope it explains why I can't really call this game Soldier of Fortune 3. Gore aside, would I recommend it? I really wouldn't. If you remove the gore from the equation, all you get is a buggy corridor shooter that crashes very frequently. Not a terrible game, but I can't see any good reason to play the censored version. Hope you enjoyed watching the review. Let me know how you feel in the comment section and if you like the video, subscribe and share it around. You can find the link to all of my Go reviews in the video description. Until next time!